Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to uh, discuss the Keystone XL pipeline project. Uh, and I'll be joined by a number uh, of my colleagues, and I want to thank them uh, up front for uh, joining me. They'll uh, come today uh, with uh, the same message that I have, and that is that the Keystone XL Pipeline project is a project that has now been under review by this administration for more than five years. We are now in year six. And so we're here today on the floor of the Senate asking quite simply, for a vote to approve the Keystone XL Pipeline project. I've put legislation in on a number of occasions. Uh, in 2012, we approved a time limit for the President to make a decision. Uh, I, I believe that bill got on the order of 73 votes, strong bipartisan support. We attached it to the payroll tax holiday. And it said that the President had to make a decision on the Keystone XL Pipeline within 90 days. He did. He turned it down. And he turned it down on the basis of the rooting uh, in Nebraska. And so not only did the state of Nebraska go through an incredible amount of work, uh, but the State Department uh, and others went back to work, did a whole new environmental impact statement after Nebraska had rerouted the pipeline, proved it by both its legislature and its governor, and uh, came forward with a new route and a new uh, environmental impact statement. That was it right at the beginning of 2012. So we set a timeline for the president to make a decision. He made the decision. He turned down the project. But we addressed the concerns that he raised. They were fully addressed. So then later, uh, we also offered a resolution of support, putting the Senate on record in support of the project. That was attached. Uh, to the budget reg resolution at the beginning of uh, 2013. We came back the next year, and on that occasion, the Senate, with 62 votes, said, hey, we support the project. Here's a resolution in support of the project stating that it is, in fact, in the national interest and ought to be approved. Since then, the President has done nothing. Well, that's not quite right. Not only has he not made a decision now as we're in the sixth year after four environmental impact statements, all of which said there's no significant environmental impact created by the project, not only has the President not made a decision with Congress on record supporting the project, but in fact, a little over a week ago on Good Friday, so on, on the afternoon of Good Friday when he figured nobody was paying any attention, the President comes out and basically puts out a statement and says not only has he not made a decision, but he's not going to make a decision. That on the basis of litigation, he is going to postpone the decision indefinitely. So here we are in year six, having met all the requirements on numerous occasions on a project that will provide energy and jobs, that will help with national security by reducing our dependence on oil from the Middle East, on a project that his own Department of State, after environmental impact statement after environmental impact statement, has come back and said, will create no significant environmental impact, will create 42,000 jobs, and will help us get energy, not only, not only move energy from states like North Dakota and Montana in our country to the refineries safely, but also bring in oil from Canada to our country so we don't have to import it from the Middle East. The President says, well, we're in year six, but I'm going to postpone this decision indefinitely. So here we are. We have a bill uh, that I introduced uh, some time ago. We have 27 co-sponsors on the bill, both parties, both parties. And what the bill does is it approves the Keystone XL Pipeline project congressionally. So instead of continuing to wait after six years, and now the President's announcement that he's going to delay the decision indefinitely, passing this bill would approve the project congressionally. And the way that works is that uh, under, the, uh, through the, under the Commerce, Foreign Commerce Clause in the Constitution, Congress has the authority to approve this project. And they have that authority under Congress's ability to oversee foreign commerce, commerce with other nations. 
And we know that because we took time to research it. We had the Congressional Research Service do the research for us, and they say this is a constitutional authority of the Congress. So we've provided that bill. The bill has been filed. As I say, we have 27 sponsors. And now it's time to vote. We'd been holding off on having a vote because the president said, you know, we're going to go through the process, or he's going to go through the process, and he's going to honor the process. And the environmental, the final, actually fourth, and supposed final environmental impact statement came out at the end of January. And there's a 90-day comment period after that, which was to expire the first part of May. And the expectation was that now that the process, or at that point, once the process was exhausted, the president would, in fact, render the long-awaited decision. But as I say on Good Friday, a little over a week ago, he came out and said, nope, no decision. And furthermore, he's not going to make a decision. And that delay is indefinite. So clearly, the administration opposes the project, and they're going to defeat it with delay. They're going to defeat it with endless delays. There's no amount of process that will ever be adequate for the administration. They'll continue to delay this decision, I guess, thinking until at some point it goes away. And so that they defeat, that, defeat the project um, through just one delay after another. And that's why it's time to vote. In a recent poll that was just put out last week, 70% of the American people want this project approved. 70%. Rasmussen poll. So the president is trying to defeat the project through delays in order to appease special interest groups. Well, the American people very much want this project approved. It's Congress's ability, it's Congress, Congress's responsibility, excuse me, responsibility to take a stand. It is long past time to vote. So at this point, I am um, making some revisions to the legislation to update it for the final environmental impact statement. We're working to get every single Republican member of this body on board, which I believe we will do and as many Democrat members as possible. And we're pushing as hard as we can to get a vote. It's time for the Senate to stand up and exercise its responsibility and vote. Now, the Senate, the Senate Majority Leader is looking at moving to energy legislation, energy efficiency legislation. That's good. Let's, let's go there. Let's have the debate. Let's offer amendments. Let's have votes. Let's do the work of the people that this body is elected to do. And as part of that, we're going to require a vote on Keystone XL Pipeline, a vote to approve it congressionally. And everybody can decide where they stand. But this is a project long overdue. And it's time to vote. And it's time to vote on congressional approval. That's our message today. And that's going to continue to be our message as we work on energy legislation. I'm very